Hello and welcome to GameSack. The Sega CD is a fascinating console, or at least I think so. Have you ever wondered what games were released for the Sega CD? Well, in this video I'm going to take a look at each and every officially released game in the North American region. And for good measure I'm going to throw in the 32X CD games as well, because why not? Anyway, I'm going to do this in alphabetical order as usual, so let's not waste any more time and get right on into it. What the Sega CD? We start off with Three Ninjas Kickback. This is an action platformer that originated on the Genesis. It's a very tough one too. The original Three Ninjas movies appealed to kids and I don't know who the developers thought would be buying this game when they designed the difficulty. This one adds some full motion video scenes here and there, some CD quality music, as well as awesome new levels with scaling and rotation. Good luck ever reaching these levels though. This was only ever available as a double pack with Hook, which I'll get to later. AX101. This is a full motion video game where you move your crosshair over the streaming video and blow stuff up. Like all Sega CD games with full motion video or FMV, it looks pretty grainy. The action is okay, but it definitely could use some music during the gameplay to make it less boring. The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Despite the title, you only play as Batman in this driving game based on the animated series. It's completely different from the Genesis game and it only features driving stages. However, the scaling and rotation here are extremely well done. The music is fantastic as well. As you might already know, this contains an original short episode done by the same production team that made a TV show. I'm surprised that they didn't intersperse the cartridge game levels in this one, but the Sega CD was on the latter half of its life when this one came out. Adventures of Willy Beamish. This is a point and click game ported from the PC. You play as Willy trying to get out of detention and do other exciting things. The developers did their best to provide lots of animations of all the characters. This version is slow, features long loading times, and is prone to crashing. It's too bad, as otherwise this would be a pretty fun game if everything were quick and snappy. Now, start writing! And I don't want to hear a peep out of anyone! Afterburner 3. This is a port of the arcade game Strike Fighter which is loosely based on Afterburner. The graphics are very sparse and disappointing. The gameplay is mostly there, but you never quite get the same sense of action as you did in any of the real Afterburner games. By far the best thing about this one is the music, but even that has an odd brass section that you don't usually hear in rock music. Still, these are awesome tunes though. AH3 Thunderstrike. This one is known as Thunderhawk outside North America. Now this is a game that I was all over. Core design often pushed the Sega CD's graphics in ways that could not be replicated on other consoles like the Super Nintendo or even the Neo Geo. You simply could not have this game on those platforms. You fly around in your little helicopter taking out primary and secondary targets. The control takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, it's nothing but fun. The Amazing Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin. Yeah, it doesn't say amazing on the title screen, but the box does. This game isn't amazing, but it's certainly not bad at all. This is basically a straight up remake and expansion of the cartridge version. Overall, it's a much better game. It adds some silly looking animation sequences. It also adds some amazing music, but it seems to play in a random order rather than certain tracks being assigned to certain stages. I was never able to get into it much, but I'd rather play this than the Genesis version, which I felt was pretty stiff. Android Assault, The Revenge of Bari Arm. This one is just called Bari Arm in Japan, but I guess they forgot to change the title screen, I don't know. 
This is a pretty good shooter with really nice graphics and music. It plays well too. You can transform into a robot, which is not only cool, but it also lets you take an extra hit. Overall, it's a pretty fun shooter. Batman Returns. This is a pretty cool driving game that really takes advantage of the Sega CD's capabilities. You couldn't get graphics of this quality outside of the arcade at the time, and no other console could even come close to this. Basically, you need to destroy a certain number of enemies in each stage as you drive along. You have mid-bosses and regular bosses to worry about as well. Most frustrating of all is the incredibly strict timer which increases the game's challenge, but it always remains enjoyable, very enjoyable. When you're sick of quality, you can play the cartridge game's platform levels, which are here too. Battle Core. This is a game from Core Design that once again features graphics with nice scaling and rotation. The gameplay window is small, but the graphics are really well drawn and colored. I say it's worth checking out. BC Racers. This is a Mario Kart style racing game that uses Road Rash style fighting mechanics instead of items. It's from Core Design, so it uses scaling and rotation, but honestly, the game isn't pretty at all. As a game, it's okay, but it won't take you long to conquer this one. Still, it's better than both the 32X and 3DO versions of the game since you can attack both to your left and to your right. Bill Walsh College Football. This is the only football game that Electronic Arts released on the Sega CD, American football anyway. It basically uses the Madden engine of that year and adds much improved sound. There's also lots of exciting video of Bill Walsh explaining the game to you. Probably the best playing football game on the Sega CD, even if it is just college. Black Hole Assault. This fighting game is a follow-up to Heavy Nova, not that that game needed one. This is one of the most awkward fighting games ever, and you'll fail quickly if you try to play it like a real fighting game. You need to use the same attack again and again and hope that it lands. I was able to squeeze some enjoyment out of this one back when the console was brand new, but I really can't recommend it to anyone these days. Bouncers. This is a horrible game where you try to bounce yourself into various orifices in a given stage to score points and win. This version only uses the CD for some music and also adds some FMV for each character. The control is frustrating at best. I don't suggest that you waste your time with this one. Radical. Ucha, ucha. Three -pointer. Bram Stoker's Dracula. This is an action platformer that uses FMV backgrounds. I give them props because this was a really cool idea to try at the time, but sadly it doesn't quite work out. You play as a dollar store Keanu Reeves as he punches and kicks spiders, bats, and other pests on his journey to defeat Dracula. Since the backgrounds are FMV, you can imagine that it makes precision jumping more than a little tricky. There are some poorly compressed clips from the movie for you to enjoy. Most people probably won't find this one very fun. Brutal Paws of Fury. Here's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game that will absolutely appeal to the furries. It doesn't appeal to me, however, and the action is slow and the AI is bad. It has a great presentation, though, with good-looking animation sequences. It's too bad that the gameplay isn't very good. This one only runs at 30 frames per second, which is too slow for a fighting game. Okay, we're moving on to the C's now, and this next one is a disappointment on so many levels, especially if you are a fan of arcade games. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. 
No, it's not the cool arcade beat-em-up, but instead an FMV driving game where you're trying to shoot and avoid things that you can barely see because of how grainy it all is. It's awesome! No, just kidding. Nothing about this one is really any good. Can you imagine picking this one up, expecting it to be a port of the arcade, and then playing this? Yikes. Championship Soccer 94. This is also known as Sensible Soccer, and it's the most basic soccer game I've ever seen. It features super tiny graphics that look less than 8-bit. The gameplay is okay, but there's really not much here that's interesting. Chuck Rock. In this one, you play as a caveman who was one of Core Design's multiple attempts at a mascot. You attack with your gut, resulting in a rather poor reach. I used to want this game so badly, and then I got it and kind of regretted it. Compared to the cartridge, it has CD music and an animated intro. The stages are short, but there are like a thousand of them. Chuck Rock 2, Son of Chuck. This sequel is a much better game in every way. You play as Chuck's baby trying to rescue his dad. You swing a club which has a much better reach than Chuck's belly. Compared to the cartridge version, this one has CD music and a few more special effects. It also has a really well done animated intro that blew me away at the time. There's no graininess at all and it was full screen. It's not the best platformer ever, but I still recommend that you try it. Cliffhanger. This takes the underwhelming beat-em-up segments from the cartridge game and adds CD music from the movie. Also added are clips from the movie. Lastly, they added some really cool scaling segments with you on a snowboard. You're trying to outrun an avalanche. You're not meant to enjoy these, however, as the difficulty is absolutely insane and these stages are also quite long. Just how big is this mountain, and why can't I snowboard over there to the left or to the right where it's perfectly clear? The frustration is enough to turn most people away. It's too bad because these stages look awesome. Sadly, this one doesn't come recommended at all. Cobra Command. This is an FMV cartoon-based shooter where you aim a reticle over cartoon helicopters and whatnot to blow them up. This was a launch game for the system, and as such the video doesn't feature a very high frame rate or much detail. It's still really fun though, even after all these years. The redone binaural sound is excellent, by far exceeding how the original arcade sounded. This one really rocked my stereo system back in the day. I definitely recommend this one. Watch out! Get up! Up! Take a right! Wow! That was close. Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia. With this disc, you can read any article, look at any picture, listen to any sound, and watch any movie. That's right, ever. Okay, not really, but there's a lot of stuff on here and it's mostly abridged. Can you 1cc this disc? I had to use two continues myself. On D-Day, June 6th, 1944, British and American troops begin the liberation of Europe. Corpse Killer. This is an FMV game where you need to shoot down zombies, many of whom float in the air for some reason. When the zombies appear, the scrolling slows down and becomes pretty jerky. I've never been able to get the Menacer to work reliably with this game despite it being there in the option screen. There's also a 32x CD version. This one features a bit more color in the video stream, but make no mistake, it still sucks just as much as a game. <laughs> Next time you should stay a little more. Hand. Prime Patrol. This is an FMV light gun game. You play as a new cop, and you can use the Konami Justifier, the American Games Game Gun, the Sega Menacer, the Sega Mouse, or even a regular controller. I recommend a light gun like the Justifier, which I'm using here. This is a silly game, and it's fun to mess up sometimes. That was the security guard you shot. Overall, it's grainy, but it's not a bad time. Not at all. Dark Wizard. This is a cool strategy RPG from Sega. You can play through the storylines of multiple characters. 
The gameplay isn't as smooth as something like the Shining Force series, but it's still very enjoyable, though you might want to turn off the Show Battle Animations option. You can visit towns to shop, talk, and recruit people. The music is amazing, even though the tracks are very short. I wish they would have included the longer cuts of these tracks. Definitely try this one if you like strategy games. Demolition Man This game came out not long at all after the movie. It's an action platformer that has side-scrolling and overhead views. It plays okay, but you can tell it's unfinished. Many of the music tracks cut off abruptly and loop, which is extremely unprofessional. There are some clips of the movie in here. Overall, I'd recommend the cartridge version, but even then, it could have used more time in the oven. Double Switch This is an FMV game starring Corey Haim where you need to trap people, similar to Night Trap, which is a game I'll get to in a bit. This one isn't as good as Night Trap though, as it's even more confusing and convoluted in how the traps work. You can't enjoy any of the story here since you're always jumping around from room to room. Some people like this game, but I never did. I want to like it, but I, there's just nothing for me to like. It doesn't have any of the nostalgia factor that Night Trap has. This isn't a game, people. You let those suckers get to the power box, and now we're all cut off. Dracula Unleashed. Dracula's on the prowl again, that old rascal, and your job is to leash him back up. This is done via full motion video scenes and a point and click interface that's evolved from the Sherlock Holmes games. Again, I'll get to those in a bit. You mainly go from place to place picking up clues which leads you to the next place. The video is large and has a pretty good frame rate. I honestly feel that it's worth playing through once, but after that, you probably will never boot it up again. I've been told you have a book about the blue for lady. The blue for lady? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. Dragon's Lair. Here's a grainy version of the classic Laserdisc arcade game. Basically, you just need to press a direction or press the sword button depending on the scene, and the scenes can be pretty short. Great artwork and funny situations abound. Dune. This is an adventure game which finds you moving around, getting Fremen to work with you in order to mine spice to defeat the Harkonnens and all that good stuff. This is not a CD version of Dune Battle for Arrakis that's a cartridge game on the Genesis. There's a couple of clips from the movie here. Some of the characters also look like their movie counterparts, whereas others do not. Oh, Patrick Stewart is looking a little worse for wear in this one. It moves a bit slow, but honestly it's not bad if you like adventure games with a little bit of strategy. Welcome to our siege, Paul Atreides. So, you want to know about the principles of our still suit? Dungeon Explorer. While this shares the same name as the Dungeon Explorer games on the TurboGrafx-16, this is its own unique game. It plays by the same set of rules and mostly the same structure though. As a result, it's pretty good. Once again, it's just fancy gauntlet, but it's fun to build up your character, buy new weapons, and gain levels. The music is good, but not as nice as either of the TurboGrafx games. Still, I recommend that you check this one out. Dungeon Master 2 Skull Keep. This is a primitive PC dungeon crawler. I've never played this one before, so I have no clue what I'm doing here. It looks to operate in a similar manner to many other primitive PC dungeon crawlers with very little in the way of movement animation. Not really my thing, but if you like these types of games, then you probably will enjoy this. Earthworm Jim Special Edition. This is the definitive version of the first Earthworm Jim game. You've got the entire Genesis version, plus level extensions, more voices, a brand new level, and of course, arranged CD quality music. This is definitely recommended, though it's pretty pricey these days. Still, it's hard to go back to playing the wimpy cartridge version after becoming accustomed to this one. I'm nude. Echo the Dolphin. 
This CD version of the cartridge original has six new levels, rebalanced design and difficulty, a few videos later in the game, an intro, and of course CD quality music. It was also the very first Sega CD game released in the long box format. It's still a very odd and puzzling game, but one that I think everyone should try. Plus, the music by Spencer Nilsson, not Nielsen, is god tier, and it was Sega's first use of Q sound in their games. This was my first experience playing Echo, and I simply can't play the cartridge version after playing this. Echo, The Tides of Time. This is the sequel, obviously. This one has more FMV, but it's computer generated this time, so it seems less cool somehow. As a game, I never really got much into this one, as Echo 1 left me satisfied and I didn't feel the need for more. Still, the music alone is reason enough to own it, even if not every single track is new. ESPN Baseball Tonight Remember when ESPN thought their name was a selling point? This is the same as the cartridge version, aside from a bit of full motion video and maybe a few extra voices during gameplay. Overall, it's an extremely poor baseball game that never switches views, not even for fielding. Ow. ESPN National Hockey Night, another lackluster sports game with the ESPN branding. The best thing about this one is that you can choose to play it from a vertical view or even a side view and you can change it by pausing the game. The scrolling is slow and choppy either way. This one has CD quality crowd noise that sounds like maybe 10 or 11 people in a large room. And of course there are FMV clips here and there. ESPN NBA Hang Time 95. No, this isn't NBA hang time from Williams, goodness no. Though this Sega CD exclusive game is still two on two, it takes place on half a court with a 3D view. Gotta give them props for them kind of using the Sega CD's special features here, I'll give them that, but I'm curious why only the floor has scaling and not the hoop. The gameplay is pretty choppy and the music gets boring after a few seconds. ESPN Sunday Night Football. This is a below average football game that's largely the same as it was on the Genesis. The gameplay just isn't as intuitive as the John Madden games. The crowd sound is better, but still doesn't sound like a crowd. There are, of course, FMV clips hoping to make you feel that your purchase was worth it. Spoiler, it wasn't. Incomplete. Eternal Champions, Challenge from the Dark Side. This is a complete reimagining of the Eternal Champions game on the Genesis, built from the ground up. There is one thing that's the same though, and that's that I just can't get into it. The balance just isn't right, and every character feels odd to control. It wasn't for lack of trying though, they definitely put a lot of effort and love into this, and that really shines through. It did try to cash in on Mortal Kombat Mania by having ultra-violent overkills. A lot of people like this one, that's cool, good for them. Eye of the Beholder. This is a dungeon crawler set in the Dungeons and Dragons universe. Well, one of the D&D universes anyway. You can use a mouse or even a mouse and a controller at the same time. Honestly, it's pretty cool once you get into it, but overall it's not my type of game. It does feature cool dance music by Yuzo Koshiro, and it was his only contribution to the Sega CD platform. I like this more than Dungeon Master 2 Skull Keep, but I know this one better. This next title came with the very first 32X CD that was released, but it's not the first 32X CD in this video. That's not very convenient, but what can I do? Fahrenheit. This is a full motion video firefighter simulator. A crappy one, of course. You basically tell the dude which way to go and he ends up going in circles no matter what you select. I've never been able to successfully complete the first house despite trying many, many times. It's a very poor game. Included in the same box is the 32X CD version, which features better color, but much worse audio. 
You still need the regular version to boot the 32X disc, probably to stop people from selling the 32X disc on its own. I still think that was a dumb decision though, as nobody wanted this. Yet I own it, go figure. Ooh, that's gas. That sticky's not even cooking. We gotta shut this off. Fatal Fury Special. This is an excellent port of the Neo Geo game, all things considered. Sure, there have been a few graphical and audio cutbacks, but nothing that makes this a poor experience. In my opinion, it's a much better fighting game than Eternal Champions. If I had to complain about something, it would be that the voices and sound effects are too quiet compared to the music. Still great overall. FIFA International Soccer This is a pretty bland game of soccer, even for its time. The Sega CD version has a CD quality crowd and, of course, lots of crappy full motion video to remind you that this is a game from the future. I'm not a fan of the sport, so I'd pass on this one. Final Fight CD This is a fantastic port of the Capcom arcade game. Not only is it two player, unlike the Super Nintendo version, but it also lets you select from all three characters. The gameplay itself is extremely faithful as well, and for the most part, it looks great. It's not as censored as the Super Nintendo version. Most of the details from the arcade are here, like the swinging handles on the subway train. The arranged music is a highlight in this one as well. Definitely recommended. Flashback. This is basically the cartridge version on CD, offering CD music and of course FMV cutaways in certain events. If you like lots of lag in your controls, then you simply must play this game right now. You need to think ahead a few moves before you do them, it doesn't play like a normal game. It's styled after Prince of Lag, I mean Prince of Persia. Anyway, I'm not keen on the FMV stuff, but the music is cool. Formula One World Championship Beyond the Limit. You race your way to the top, building yourself up in this game. I bought it when it was first released because it used the scaling features of the Sega CD. I ended up taking it back that same day for a full refund because my god does it make my eyeballs bleed. It also controls as poorly as it looks. In a strange twist of events, the programmers in Japan were way behind, and I mean way behind Western developers when it came to using the Sega CD's special features. I couldn't stand playing this game even for the few minutes that I had to to include it in this episode. Ground Zero Texas. This is another FMV game. Here you're shooting aliens disguised as humans with a reticle. It's another one of those room switching games, but at least there are only four angles here. The more damage that your camera takes, the harder and harder it is to see out of them until it gets repaired. Overall, it's unsurprisingly not good. Heart of the Alien 1 and 2. This contains two games on a single disc. Can you believe that? I was not looking forward to booting this one up. It's another one of those laggy games and this really just isn't my thing. I like feeling in control of my characters and neither of these titles offers anything remotely close to that. The graphics and sounds are fantastic though. <laughs> Heimdall. Here, you play as a dude going from screen to screen, often solving puzzles. The combat is weird, though I like the animation. The game is also weirdly silent and could definitely use some music. I do like the minigames, however. Overall, it seems a bit out of place on the console. Hook. This platform game looks a lot more fun than it actually is. The graphics are really nice and remind me of a Capcom arcade game. Alas, the controls are slow and floaty even when you're running. What makes this version great though is John Williams' music which is used throughout. I loved that back when I rented this game, but it wasn't enough to make me want to buy it, even used. Iron Helix. This is an FMV exploratory adventure, kind of like Myst, only less interesting. You're trying to regain control of a ship that's been reprogrammed to target an Earth-like planet. 
The crew's DNA has been overwritten because of course it has. I can't really think of anything more to say about this one here. Jaguar XJ220. I pronounce it Jaguar like all other Americans, and that's just the way we say it, so get over it. This racing game from Core Design isn't spectacular, but I always liked it because it was the first racing game at home I played with real scaling sprites. Well, I mean besides Road Rash and I guess Riding Hero. But still, it fascinated me. You can choose from a selection of one car with one color and the racing action is pretty tame. Overall, it's average, but I have a little bit of nostalgia for it. Jeopardy. This is a video game version of the TV game show. It has lots of full motion video of Alex Trebek and the contestants. The questions in this game do not mess around, so I hope you really studied your Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia because that's exactly the type of knowledge that's required here. Typing in the answers with a D-pad is the opposite of fun, but it's still oddly addictive. Sorry, that's incorrect. Joe Montana's NFL Football. Well, they tried, I guess. This game uses the Sega CD's special graphical features exclusively with literally no help from the Genesis itself anywhere on screen. As a result, it runs slow and choppy. It's often confusing trying to tell exactly what the hell is happening. Like seriously, what the hell? Still, it's pretty damned impressive that you're basically playing in a 3D stadium on a 16-bit console. If a turnover happens, it's not announced out loud or on screen, so that's fun. Honestly, I don't recommend this one. Jurassic Park. I was always disappointed with this one. It just wasn't what I wanted from the Sega CD. This is a point and click adventure game where you need to recover eggs. These days I have more patience for this type of game and I like how responsive it is. Still, this is not what I wanted to play in the 90s. I think you should give it a try if you like point and click adventures and great cue sound audio. KO Flying Squadron. This is a horizontal shooter that, well, it's pretty good. I think it's a bit overrated due to its scarcity though. As a game, it plays smoothly and overall it's pretty fun, but the visuals are a touch dim. I passed this one up at Best Buy when it was on clearance for either $17 or $27, I can't remember. I think it's worth at least $30 and I wish I would have bought it. I do not think it's worth the thousands of dollars that it's going for these days though. Kids on Sight. This is a full motion video game aimed at kids. Your job is to operate various construction vehicles. Meanwhile, two guys named Dee's and Nuts will act as comedy relief. Dizzy and Nuts are gonna show you how to operate heavy equipment. This is decent for kids, I suppose. The Lawnmower Man. This is one of the worst games on the platform. Instead of being a playable game like the cartridge version, this one revels in poorly rendered CGI FMV and barely any user input. It's bad on your eyes and even worse on your soul. Do me a favor, avoid this one. Lethal Enforcers. You can use the controller or the Konami Justifier light gun for this one. You play as a cop and you need to murder as many criminals as possible. And hey, maybe even shoot some civilians along the way. That'll teach them for being civilians. Don't worry, you're not gonna get penalized unless you do it a lot, just like real life. The visuals are grainy, but it's not an FMV game. Still, it's pretty fun. Lethal Enforcers 2. This one takes place in the Old West and it's more of the same kind of action, light gun style. The same rules pretty much apply here. I feel that this one is the better of the two Lethal Enforcers games. The action is arcadey, the voices are fun, and even the music is great. Lynx, the challenge of golf. 
I'm amazed this game was even released. The load times are bad and the gameplay is even worse. The swing meter is uncontrollable. Seriously, you can't tell it how hard to hit the ball. Press the button or don't, the same thing will happen. I can play real golf better than this and I suck at real golf. I recommend sticking with Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf on the Genesis. Lodestar, The Legend of Tully Bodine. This is an FMV crosshair shooter that plays kind of like Sewer Shark in that you not only need to worry about aiming, but steering as well. It actually works a little better in my opinion. It has lots of recognizable actors like Ned Beatty, that guy from Twin Peaks and whatnot. I'm kind of surprised at the production values for a rather mediocre game. I love that death animation though. Lords of Thunder. This is a great horizontal shooter ported over from the Turbo Duo. Unfortunately, it drops the ball in a few places. It's now incredibly easy, not that the Turbo Duo version was difficult or anything. The excellent music has been re-recorded and sounds beefier, which is good, but I wish they had chosen a different drum set. Not that you'll hear the music anyway, because the sound effects coming from the Genesis are way too loud. If you have a Model 1 Genesis and are using the mixing cable, you can decrease the volume slider a bit to remedy this. The digital sound effects produced by the Sega CD sound chips are too quiet. It's still a good shooter, it's just disappointing compared to the Turbo Duo original. Lunar The Silver Star. This is a fantastic RPG from Working Designs. If you like RPGs, then there is no way that you wouldn't enjoy this one. It's snappy, has great music, and a fun story with lots of excellent characters. Plus, the music is perfect as well. The Sega CD desperately needed this game in its library at the time, and thankfully Working Designs delivered. Lunar Eternal Blue. This is the sequel and another excellent RPG. It's a little bit slower paced, requires a touch more grinding, especially in the beginning, but overall it's still a phenomenal game. In fact, I enjoyed it more than part one, and that's saying a lot. It takes place 1,000 years later, so all of the characters are different here. I highly recommend playing both of the Lunar games if you can. Do you like bad full motion video? Okay, I know, I know, all of it on the Sega CD is bad, but what if it could be even worse? With six megabits of RAM, that's something special. Welcome to the next level. Mad Dog McCree. The classic Laserdisc light gun game comes to the Sega CD. The video quality is among the worst on the console, which can make the bad guys really tough to see. It's still fun though, even if this is probably the worst version of this particular game. You'll soon learn where you need to shoot after you die a few times. Mad Dog 2, The Lost Gold. Mad Dog is back for more. Mad Dog's back. This time you're also looking for treasure. The video quality is a little better this time out, making things slightly easier to see, but not much. It's still really fun though, just like the last one. Make my video, Inks. I don't know why games like this exist. Your job is to edit the best music video possible to three NXS songs using stock footage and various effects. It's not intuitive at all and not fun at all either. Games like this give the Sega CD a very bad reputation. Make my video, Criss Cross. Anyone remember Criss Cross? This has Don Pardo as an announcer. Other than that, it's just another make my video turd. It's the make my video show, starring the top top of hip hop. Make my video, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Yet another one of these pieces of crap. But this one has Mark Wahlberg. Make my video, make, make my, 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 my video, skate, peace, I'm out like shout. 
Make my video, Power Factory featuring CNC Music Factory. The only redeeming feature of this one is that it has Phil Lamar. Nothing else is notable and I'm glad that this is the last one of these games that I have to let you know about. Is there something you'd like to say to me? Just say the word. Mansion of Hidden Souls. This is a full motion video adventure which feels like Mist or the Seventh Guest. Find items around the mansion and unlock new areas. It plays well despite looking like absolute ass, so it's worth checking out. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. You play as Robert De Niro in his greatest role ever. It works kind of like a point and click adventure even though you see your character on screen. It plays pretty well for the most part. Well, except for the one-on-one -on -one battles. Damn, these can be pretty tough, but the AI is stupid, so you can definitely beat it. Overall, it's not as bad as you might think. This one was only ever sold as a double pack combined with Bram Stoker's Dracula. The Masked Rider, Kamen Rider Zoe. This is an FMV action game based on the 1993 movie Kamen Rider Zoe. It plays like Dragon's Lair except with actual prompts. And you don't have a lot of time to respond to those prompts. I'm honestly surprised that this got a Western release. Not that we needed it. Mega Race. The Sega CD was home to a lot of truly horrible games, and this is yet another abomination. It's a racing game on a monochromatic FMV background. Who thought that this would be a good idea? The only thing good about this game is the host Lance Boyle. Protected from it, as I always say at this point in the show, have a nice day, baby. Mickey Mania, the timeless adventures of Mickey Mouse. This is a game with a great concept and even better visuals. You guide Mickey through various cartoons from his career. The game looks fantastic, but the gameplay isn't as tight as Castle of Illusion. Your hitbox is huge, and of course everything can hurt you, even bones from a skeleton you just destroyed. This is a game where I'd rather watch someone else play than play it for myself. Microcosm. This is an FMV shooter where you're shrunk down and inserted into someone's butthole. You fly through dislodging stubborn feces and foreign objects that the owner put up there. The gameplay isn't horrible, but it's not exciting either. However, the music is pretty good. Midnight Raiders. This is a full screen FMV helicopter combat game. It plays in a similar manner to Cobra Command, except that the action keeps cutting away to the boring characters. The gameplay itself is alright, but the targets move very erratically, making them tough to hit. Seriously, just play Cobra Command instead. What are you doing? Giving them practice? Go, go, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Instead of a real game like those available on the cartridge-based systems, this is an FMV adventure. You get to watch a few abridged episodes of the TV show while pressing a bunch of buttons. Miss a button press and you lose a little bit of life. I was never really into this show, but fans may kind of dig it, maybe? The Misadventures of Flink. This is an excellent looking platform game. Unfortunately, most of the talent went into the visuals with little left over for the gameplay. It's very European, which isn't a compliment for games designed back then, sorry. Still though, it's playable. Like I said, it does look really nice though. They would go on to perfect this style of gameplay with Lomax Dilemming on the PlayStation. Mortal Kombat. Compared to the Genesis version, you get more voice and arcade quality music, though some of the tunes play in the wrong stages. You get a few more frames of animation here and there on certain characters. You also get load times during the Shang Tsung match and also an FMV of the Mortal Kombat commercial. Mortal Kombat isn't my jam, but if it's yours, you should enjoy this port. My Paint. It's a painting program. Draw while some insipid music plays. Fortunately, you can change the music or turn it off. 
Exciting stuff here. NBA Jam. Two on two basketball, just like the big crowds want. It's a good game. You get much better music compared to the Genesis version as well as a few minor upgrades. Otherwise, I'm not sure why they thought the Sega CD needed its own version of this. NFL Football Trivia Challenge. You answer football trivia questions that somehow also a football game itself? I guess maybe if you were asking your dad to buy you a Sega CD, there might be some appeal to wanting this. Because, of course, all dads love football. It's the law. He has served as play-by-play -play and color analyst on ABC's Monday Night Football the longest. NFL's Greatest, San Francisco vs. Dallas 1978-1993. This is an FMV football game where you can play as Dallas or San Francisco. Call the plays and then watch it unfold. That's right, it's every bit as exciting as it sounds. For some reason, Sega of America thought that the world needed this game. Or maybe the world's dads, I don't know. Steve Young now awaiting the snap from center. Looking over the defense. NHL Hockey 94. Pretty much the same as the Genesis version as far as I can tell. Except here, you have a bit of FMV. You also get CD quality sounds of a crowd that seems rather uninterested in the game. Night Trap. This is the controversial game that made Nintendo try to wreck Sega using the US government. That's right, that's how petty Nintendo is. Your job is to trap augers using traps built into the home. You need to navigate eight different rooms. This was all fascinating back in the day, and it would have aged much better if the Sega CD hadn't insisted on bringing out so many other FMV games. These days, its only value is nostalgia. Of course, a 32X CD version was made and released. This one uses older footage for some of the shots, has a bit more color, and a bigger video screen. I prefer the original Sega CD footage with the Genesis controller in it. Honestly, it's not even worth playing if you don't have that. You with me, Control? We're going in. Nova Storm. This is a shooter where you fly over extremely bland and poorly rendered FMV backgrounds. So many developers tried doing this back then. I wonder why they all thought it would work well when it never did. Even in its own time, console users thought games like this were garbage. PC CD-ROM users back then, though? Oh man, they loved this stuff. Panic! This game is crazy. Basically, all you do is press buttons. They often do very silly things. Some will move you to a new scene or back to an old one. You're trying to reach the main computer. Some of the buttons are rigged to blow up different places around the world. The only bad thing about this game is accidentally pressing a button which moves you to a new scene before you've had a chance to press all the other buttons and see what they do. The developers had a ton of fun making this one. I love how most of the sound effects are just some guy making them with his mouth. Pitfall, the Mayan adventure. You're off to rescue your dad, who was the star of the original Pitfall game. This one doesn't exactly make the greatest first impression, but it grows on you rather quickly. Your dude is animated perhaps a bit too much for his own good. He moves super fast and controls a bit slippery. Still, you can learn to have fun here, and the CD music is pretty good. They added some new levels for your enjoyment compared to the Genesis version. There's also a bit of FMV in here because of course there is. Why wouldn't there be? It's a CD game. They have to have FMV. Pop Full Mail. This is a fantastic side-scrolling action RPG brought over by Working Designs. Lots of personality here and the gameplay is great as well. The music, control, length, and difficulty are all spot on. You can turn off the voices if you feel that they slowed the game down. This is the best version of this game that exists. Definitely make sure to try this one out if you can. Powermonger. This is basically Populous, but crap. Populous was pretty easy to figure out by trial and error. 
This one, you're gonna need the manual for sure. It's also extremely slow and choppy. Not for me. Yeah. Prince of Persia, the original laggy platformer. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean cinematic platformer. It is so cinematic. Weirdly, Blackthorn on the 32X is the only one of these types of games that I enjoy. I remember buying this and returning it for a full refund that same day, and now as I'm playing it again 30 years later, I want another refund. Prize Fighter. Yes, an FMV boxing game entirely in black and white, trying to evoke feelings of the movie Raging Bull. As you can imagine, this doesn't work well at all. It's hard to tell when and where you can hit your opponent. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is not as good as Mike Tyson's punch out. Pugsy. This is a puzzle platformer with outstanding graphics. It also has some really strange physics going on. The game starts out slow, giving you a chance to learn it, but I've never personally been into puzzle platformers. Oddly, the game doesn't use battery backup RAM to save and instead relies on a password system which feels archaic for a CD game. Yes, even back then. Also, if you die fighting a boss, you need to complete the previous level that you already solved before fighting again. Racing Aces. Behold, a racing game featuring old airplanes and weapons. I was always fascinated with this game looking at it on the shelf at Electronics Boutique, but I never bought it because of how awful the graphics looked. It wasn't available for me to try from any of the places that I rented games from. Still, I was curious if it were smooth or not. Alas, as you can see, it is not. It's very difficult to control your plane due to the choppiness. The fact that this one even exists is still kind of intriguing to me though. Radical Rex. We sure loved our platformers back in the 90s. This one isn't too bad, but it certainly doesn't feel like a AAA title or anything. But you could certainly do worse than Radical Rex here. This one is pretty much the same game as the cartridge version aside from the CD music, which is fairly good. RDF Global Conflict. I never gave this game a second thought because the title made it sound like a boring war sim game. Imagine my surprise when I found out that it uses the Sega CD's special features. Even though it's in a small window, it works as well, if not better, than Battlecore. The map is huge, so you'll spend a lot of time wandering around trying to take out all your targets. This one is surprisingly fun. Revenge of the Ninja. No, it's not based on the cool 1983 movie, but instead a Laserdisc game called Ninja Hayate. It's similar to Dragon's Lair in that you press one of four directions or an attack. It's worth playing through once, but it doesn't have the same lasting impressions as some other Laserdisc games. This one was only released in North America. Revengers of Vengeance. This game has so much potential. At its heart, it's a crappy fighting game from the same people who brought you Black Hole Assault. It's very choppy and the AI is ridiculous. But there's also an RPG mode where you earn experience, money, and buy items to improve your stats and the like. The battles are impossible one-on-one -on -one fights, but you still earn experience and money if you lose. There's also shooter segments. It's certainly not the best shooter on the system, but honestly, not the worst either. I just wish that this game spent a little bit more time on its presentation and controls. Rise of the Dragon. This is a pretty cool cyberpunk adventure game from the people who brought you Willy Beamish. This game is much more snappy and as a result quite enjoyable to play. There are some bugs, for example you can lock yourself out of your own apartment if you don't grab your ID first thing in the game. Thank Other than that, it's a pretty good time. Hey, greetings, officer. I'm not a police officer. 
Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> Road Avenger. This is the best FMV game on the system or ever made, period. This one, this version right here. It's better than the arcade it's based on just because of the audio, though I'd love a version with clean video with this audio and gameplay. That's right, the gameplay is even better here. You're pissed off and driving your vehicle everywhere like crazy, and of course any and everyone is trying to stop you. This is such an enjoyable game and it somehow actually feels like you're in control of your car. There is just so much energy in this game, it's impossible not to have a good time. It's so damn fun and a must have for sure. Road Rash. This is basically a demake of the game that appeared on the 3DO, Saturn, and PlayStation. Unfortunately, they didn't bother to use any of the Sega CD's scaling features to help out with the graphics. It uses the old Genesis Road Rash engine. Hell, sometimes it even feels choppier than the cartridge games. This is the only version that plays the licensed music during a race, presented in severely degraded mono, mind you. I prefer how the 3DO and the others did it. I really miss that silly race music. This is still a good game, though. Robo Aleste. This vertical shooter is a spiritual follow-up to Musha on the Genesis. That's some pretty big shoes to fill, and I don't think this game is quite up to the task. It's still not bad at all. I just expected so much more on the Sega CD back when I bought this. There's really no reason for it to be a CD game. If you go in fresh without having played Musha first, you'll probably enjoy it a lot. Alright, we're in the final stretch. Can you do it? Can you hang in for the rest of these games? I have confidence in you. Not in you though, and I'm not surprised. You've always disappointed me. But the rest of you? Yeah, let's do this. Samurai Showdown. This port of the Neo Geo weapons-based fighting game isn't bad. The control is pretty good, but the character Earthquake is missing since he's so big. The zooming in and out as you fight is also gone, and I'm fine with that. San Diego Zoo presents The Animals, a true multimedia experience. Enjoy a clunky and slow interface as you look at some pictures and video of a few different animals. I don't think this is San Diego though, but what do I know? Might be decent for kids, I suppose. And at the rate of extinction of species, which is about one a day right now, and by the year 2000, maybe one a minute. Sega Classics Arcade Collection. This includes four games, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Columns, and The Revenge of Shinobi. A later released version added a fifth game, Super Monaco GP. Most of these games feature improved voices thanks to the Sega CD's sound chip. Golden Axe features the arcade music streamed off of the CD and for some reason loses the two-player option. Columns features new title screen music where it had none before. There's no way to get back into the selection music from within any of the games. These discs were only ever available as pack-ins with the Sega CD. Ow. Sewer Shark. A lot of people have fond memories of this one because it was packed in with the Sega CD Model 2. I am not one of those people. You need to worry about shooting and navigating, so that means the D-pad has two different functions at the same time. You can't even see the tunnels that you need to turn into as they approach because it's so grainy. Ever since this game was released, I thought it was trash. And you know what? It is. Honestly, the best part is your over-the-top co-pilot. Shadow of the Beast 2. Despite the name, you're running around as a human in this one. It's not as good as the original game, which got an excellent port on the Turbo Duo. The graphics here are often quite nice, but the gameplay and music are only average. You won't escape now, mortal! Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective this is an investigative game where you try to discover clues and bring the real culprit to justice. It uses full motion video in many scenes. 
This was only ever available as a pack-in with the Model 1 Sega CD. I enjoyed the Turbo CD version more. By the time the Sega CD was released, I had my fill of Sherlock Holmes, so I didn't play it much. Andrew was so unassuming that everyone liked him. Including Mr. Rurubaru? Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Volume 2. Pretty much the same as before with redesigned graphics and more mysteries to solve. Not much more to say about this one. I am one of the world's greatest experts on De Kuiper, and I tell you this painting was painted by the hand of De Kuiper. Shining Force CD. This is an excellent strategy game. Basically, they took the two Game Gear Shining Force games and put them on the Sega CD using graphics from Shining Force 2. Once you beat both of those, you unlock a third quest, and maybe a fourth if you're lucky. However, this game doesn't feature the towns to wander around with like you had in the first two games, only the side view screen here. Also, you'll need a RAM card to access the third quest because the save files are so huge. It's still great though. Still feed. I was so excited to get this one back when it was announced. Star Fox had just come out not long before on the Super Nintendo and the graphics here absolutely destroyed it. The gameplay, however, is remarkably average. It's a tilted shooter and these are my least favorite types of shooters. It's not awful though, just don't expect the simple gameplay to match the awesome background graphics. Slam City with Scotty Pippen. Yes, it's an FMV basketball game, just what the world needed. Yes, it plays horribly, and yes, it sucks, just like every other game by Digital Pictures. For some reason, they thought 32X owners would be jonesing for this title, so it's available there too. You have a bit better video quality, but the same craptastic gameplay. You and me will play one on one. What do you say? Snatcher. This is one of the more sought after and expensive games on the Sega CD. This cyberpunk digital comic slash text adventure is an amazing game though. It's the only version of Snatcher that ever came out in English and it even features an extra chapter. You can use the Konami Justifier light gun for these segments, but honestly, the controller works much better for these parts. With this game, you'll get a great story that's inspired by lots of movies, nice graphics, and excellent music. I'm glad I was able to get this for a normal price back when it first came out. Now analyzing recovered hair sample. The software tool works is Star Wars Chess. This one doesn't seem to obey my commands all the time and the board is difficult to see because of the angle. However, it's totally worth playing just to see all of the death animations when one piece kills another piece. Soul Feast. This is a slightly above average horizontal shooter that's elevated mostly by its excellent music. They removed a lot of sound effects which was baked into the music tracks in the Japanese version. The CD version of this was only available as a pack-in with the Model 1 Sega CD in North America. Sonic CD. A lot of people unsurprisingly love this game. This one features a time travel mechanic, which I always do my best to avoid because I feel like it severely interrupts the flow of the game due to the loading and the loud noise that it makes. This game encourages lots of exploration, which is pretty unique for a Sonic game. They changed the music from the Japanese version just because they could, I think, but it's still good music. Like I said, most Sonic fans really enjoy this one. Soul Star. Here it is, probably the best use of the Sega CD's special features, and it comes to us from Core Design. The game plays decently, though the free roaming flying stages control rather oddly, and the controls are far from intuitive. These stages are also not very forgiving. Still, just looking at this game lets you know how almost every other developer severely dropped the ball when making games on the platform, including Sega themselves, who not even once approached this level of graphical mastery. Even with the weird controls, this is still a fun game.
Space Ace. This is another FMV action game from the same people who brought us Dragon's Lair. The input timing is more forgiving on this release. I love the animation and the art style, but as a game, it's okay. The Space Adventure, also known as Cobra. This is a text adventure, kinda sorta like Snatcher, but not really. It's also crazy expensive these days, just like Snatcher. It features a nice, if rather slow, story for you to play through with decent visuals. I'm glad I picked up my copy when it was on clearance at Electronics Boutique. You've had it, you little jerk! You're dead meat. Starblade! This is a port of the Namco arcade game done by Technosoft. Move a cursor over the action scene to shoot down enemies. The graphics are very reminiscent of Sylphide, but a little less impressive. Things that you can shoot down are represented with wireframes. The game itself is decent, however, I didn't get any further using the mouse than I did using a standard controller. This game could use some music, as the energy and excitement level are both extremely low. Even the people talking in the game seem incredibly bored. Roll through the asteroid belt, ready to engage the enemy. Making a rapid descent. Entering enemy's defense line. Star Wars Rebel Assault. This is a strange game that relies on bad looking FMV for its scenes. For the longest time, I couldn't get past the opening flight training scene because I kept running into the walls. The game improves immensely after that, but the quality of the video always remains as some of the worst on the console. There are even some segments where you're not in a vehicle. This one plays better than it looks. It'd be hard not to. We have them, Lord Vader. Within moments, our troops will board their ship. We then have the stolen plans back in our possession. Stellar Fire. You play as an atomic death sled that scoots around a barren landscape shooting things. You can't aim up or down, and a lot of enemies are above your line of fire. This keeps going on forever without an objective until you die. The radar points you at something, but you never seem to be able to arrive. This is boring as hell, but at least the music is great. Supreme Warrior. Yes, an FMV first person fighting game. It works every bit as well as Prize Fighter or Scotty Pippen. And by that, I mean it doesn't work well at all. Seriously, Digital Pictures is the scourge of the Sega CD. There was a 32X CD version, which looks a little better, but still pretty bad. I don't know how these horrible games were greenlit or where they got their money from. I guess maybe people actually bought them? <laughs> Surgical Strike. This is another game where you play as a death sled scooting around blowing stuff up, but this one is all FMV. I can't quite figure out everything about this one because of course it has to have some weirdness with turning around and whatnot, but it's still light years ahead of Stellar Fire. There was a 32X CD version as well, but it was only released in Brazil. It's a bit odd to play, but man is it ever fun blowing stuff up. The Terminator. This isn't just a cartridge game on CD, it's been completely remade from the ground up. It's mostly an outstanding game, but it definitely needs some tweaking in the control department, especially these damn ladders. The music is also excellent, though sometimes it's not really appropriate to the franchise. That's okay though. I do recommend this one, but use a level select code to get past these damn ladders! The Third World War. This game's a lot better than I thought it would be. Choose a country to control. You can recruit troops, invade other countries, do covert operations, give economic aid to other countries, raise taxes, manipulate mass media, it's all quite entertaining. You see it all play out through a scrolling ticker at the bottom of the screen. This isn't for everyone, that's for sure, but it surprised me. Time Gal. This is an FMV game similar to Dragon's Lair, but this one features more of a cutesy anime style. Still, it's quite fun to play as you travel through time, with everyone wanting to kill you the instant you arrive. Wolf Team did a great job cleaning up most of the graphics. The FMV games released in North America by Renovation and ported by Wolf Team were always fun. Time. 
Tomcat Alley. This was a big deal back when it was released because it was the first game to use full screen FMV and it was pretty impressive coming from a single speed drive. This takes place in the same universe as Midnight Raiders as it has some of the same characters. However, this one doesn't quite play as well. It's really easy to screw things up, but that was the case with most FMV games. Ratchet, abort mission. Repeat, abort mission. There's something wrong with a kid. Trivial Pursuit, a video game version of the board game. You guess if the answers given are right or wrong. They always give you the correct answer, so I'm not sure how this is even a game. At least it has some scaling. Whee! Ultraverse Prime, though the title screen only says Prime. This is a rather mediocre beat-em-up that could have been something more. Instead, it's repetitive and gets pretty boring by the end of the third act of the first stage. For some reason, the bottom quadrant of the screen is completely black, which is very odd. Also, don't view the comics in the options screen, otherwise you'll have to reset the console to get out. This was only available as a double pack with Microcosm. Vi. This is a rather basic looking RPG. It also requires lots and lots of grinding, but it's still better than you might think and entertaining overall. Aside from the grinding, the gameplay is pretty tight. Just put on some of your favorite music and grind away. <laughs> Virtual VCR, the colors of modern rock. This is a lightweight title where you watch music videos with glorious mono sound. You can take pictures and view them later. That's about it, really. Wheel of Fortune, another TV game show video game. Pat Sajak didn't like the Sega CD. He was more of a Turbo Graphics fan, so he refused to be in this game. So Vanna White does double duty in this one. They even used the Sega CD's exciting rotation feature on the spinning wheel. This is a big step up over the cartridge version. There are two U's. Who shot Johnny Rock? Another FMV light gun shooter from the people who brought us Mad Dog McCree and Time Control. No, Crime Patrol. This one seems to have some technical issues with the hit detection. I shoot and clearly hit my target, but it doesn't register. I was able to do a little better with the standard controller. I'd skip this one as it seems marred with other technical issues as well. Besides, how do you turn down a dame that gives you roses? Dame the key to the mystery will be found in Johnny's safe. Wild Woody. I don't know what they were thinking when they came up with this one. It's an odd platformer at best and only moderately enjoyable. It kind of uses the Sega CD special features for its bonus stages. Overall, I'd say it plays a little worse than it looks. Wing Commander. This series has always set the bar pretty high when it comes to its presentation, and pretty low when it comes to the gameplay. The parts on the ship are really neat, with lots of cool characters and visuals. Flying your ship around, though, is far less interesting, and the visuals here are pretty sparse. Wirehead. This is the last FMV game we'll look at today. Thank God. A guy is able to be controlled by you thanks to an antenna connected to his ear. You move him around, and memorizing doesn't seem to work very well because the results seem to change. I don't like it. It would be better if it controlled more like Dragon's Lair rather than giving you multiple choices on every prompt. Wolf Child. This at first seems to basically be just a cartridge game on CD, and overall it's a decent if unspectacular action title. However, starting with Stage 2, the level layouts and even some of the details have been changed, sometimes by quite a bit. Still unspectacular, but not awful. Wonder Dog. 
This is another attempt at a mascot from Core Design. You control a space dog. It controls okay, though I'm not fond of the angular projectile attack. Before this came out, I thought that these warped looking buildings in the background would animate using the Sega CD special features, but no, of course not. Overall, it's pretty fun once you get used to how your attacks work. World Cup USA 94. Yay, it's a soccer game. This one plays okay. In fact, it plays better than the other two soccer games on the console. It even has an anamorphic widescreen mode, even though it's not tremendously wide. It also has some music by the Scorpions, because when you think soccer, you think the Scorpions. Finally, we have WWF Rage in the Cage. I imagine this is pretty close to the cartridge version. I didn't want to play it to find out. However, you do get CD quality crowd sounds and music, a little bit of FMV, some scaling and rotating of the WWF logo, and much better announcer voices. Ooh, yeah! Reach yourself, yeah, because it's time for the Macho Madness to bust loose! As a game, it sucks, but I'm not a fan of wrestling games, so take that with a grain of salt, because I know you're going to be salty about that. And there you go, that was every single game released in North America for the Sega CD. Now, like any console, there are some stinkers in there, but there's a lot of good stuff too. In fact, more than most people give it credit for because they narrowly focus in on that FMV aspect of the console and just write the whole thing off as bad. But what do you think of the Sega CD's North American library? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSat. There's some pseudo 3D, pixel scaling everywhere, but that sweet America's hottest talk line. Guys, hot ladies are waiting to talk to you. Press one now. Guys, press one now. <laughs>